Hello, good morning, and welcome to this yin yoga practice to shed morning stiffness and to get you ready for your day. My name is Debbie Daly. We're going to be doing a sequence of yin postures held for two and a half minutes at a time. And the poses are for opening up all the major parts of the body so that we can feel really comfortable in all of our joints today. And we'll go ahead and get started in butterfly pose. So you may or may not want a cushion under your seat for this as you take the soles of your feet together with your knees wide and come forward over the legs. And now as we stretch into this pose, you can feel maybe a sensation of stretch and lengthening in your spine, in your back body, and see what your hands wanna do. Maybe they like clasping around the toes like this, or maybe they like coming forward onto your mat. And you may like having some props piled under your forehead, cushions, blocks, whatever you've got available. And now to kind of say hello and greet the spine, let's lift the chest for a moment and take a little bit of an energizing squeeze of all of those muscles along your spine on either side. And as you exhale, soften yourself back down into that easy, rounded position. And as you continue to rest and soften here, notice what's happening with your breath. Notice where you feel your breath going in your body. And maybe in this position, the breath finds its way into the back body a little bit more. And notice any sensations in the inner thighs. Softening, one more breath. And now we will slowly make our way up and out of the pose and pause here at the top with the spine upright. And shifting into a hands and knees position to come into um, dragon pose. So take your right leg forward in dragon pose. Your left hand can be on the floor and maybe your right elbow on your knee. Or maybe both hands on the floor on the inside of the foot. You might like walking this foot out to the side. Or you might like keeping it closer in. And some people like to have the hands on either side of the foot or even climb up on the leg. So in general, in yin, we want to keep a sense of relaxing in the hips rather than trying to square or engage them very much. But if you feel, if you feel safer in the pose or if it feels more comfortable to engage a bit, that's fine. And you can explore like I'm doing. You could move a little bit in the pose, especially since it's morning time, it can be good to move around a little bit within this pose. I'm feeling the sensation of length and stretching in your left thigh, the front of your left thigh and the front of your left hip. And also maybe there's a feeling that you're kind of back bending. 
And if you like that feeling, you could emphasize it more by drawing your right shoulder back, or drawing both shoulders back, drawing the crown of the head back. And if you want even more of that, you could bend your back leg up, see if reaching the heel is in your range of motion, and take it into a dragon's tail pose. And if that doesn't happen for you, if holding your foot is not comfortable or doesn't work, don't worry about that. So keeping this as twisted or not twisted as you like. It's your body. It's your practice. It's your time this morning. And of course, if you like coming down on the elbows, you could be doing that. And now slowly coming up, tuck your back toes, step back into downward dog. Walk the legs in downward dog, press one heel at a time. A few pumps on each side and then we will take it to the other side. So we had the right leg forward, now we'll have the left leg forward. Coming into your version of dragon pose, exploring as much as you'd like, hands in the position you'd like. And do make sure you pad under your back knee if you're on a hard floor and you feel any discomfort there. Use a blanket under the back knee or double your mat up or whatever you need to do. And perhaps coming down on the elbows. Perhaps coming into more of a back bended kind of angle. Shoulders come back as you twist it, bring your head back. And optionally reaching back to hold the foot. Getting a little more of that back bend. Feeling into this core area of the body, the front of the hip, the front of the thigh, the lower back, the sacrum. There's a lot of energy we store here. A lot of tension can also accumulate here. So that's why I love this pose so much. I really, to tell you the truth, I have like a love-hate relationship with this pose because I, I sort of never feel like getting into it. It never seems like a good idea. And then once I get into it, I'm like, oh yeah, I need this. Taking a few more breaths wherever you are. And slowly releasing downward facing dog. Inhale, and as you exhale, bring it forward into plank pose. And from plank, dropping the knees, coming all the way down onto the belly. And right into sphinx pose, elbows and forearms on the mat. Hands can be clasped, or you could hold opposite elbows, or you could have your hands flat on the ground. And the legs 
can come wider or narrower. See what feels good in your body. And breathing into this back bend. And after this first minute in the pose, if you feel like you want more sensation, then come up into seal pose and see how that feels with straighter arms. Your hands could be wide as your mat. You want to angle your arms and hands in a way that you're able to lock the elbows so that it's kind of a minimal effort to hang out here rather than bending the elbows and having a feeling of engaged arms. And if this is too much for you, just go back down to where we started, back to the Sphinx and hang out there, relax there. Closer in with the hands or farther away if you're in this seal pose. If you have short arms like me, then this pose might be a better fit for you if you tend to have Longer arms, it might be a little too much for you. Keep on breathing wherever you are, letting the breath help you soften and relax into the back bend. And you could check in with your head and neck. Sometimes it's nice to just move the head around in the pose, especially if you feel any neck tension. And just release it with some gentle movement or to lift the head a little more energetically if that feels good. And releasing down now, slowly coming into child's pose. So. As your chest comes to the ground, you'll place your hands on either side of your chest. Bring the hips up and back. And coming up now to hands and knees. I'm going to take it into rolling panda pose. So from hands and knees position, the left arm comes under, slides under, and the right hand can slide up. You could be palm down or fingers on the ground. And now check in with your head position and shoulder that's on the ground, because that's what we really want to focus on for this first part of the pose, is to take the left shoulder down away from the ear and then even reposition the head so the ear is farther away from the shoulder so that we're stretching into the left side of the neck. Keep on breathing into what you're feeling. And of course, there's a little bit of a twist happening in the spine here. Now, if you want to bring this more into your back body and into the back of your neck, you could take this right foot out to the side like a kickstand, extend the leg and roll farther onto your back. And this will get into the trapezius at the base of your neck, your upper back muscles. And you could take this right hand behind the back or keep it up above your head. Keep on breathing smoothly, softly. Maybe relaxing a little more in the upper body, the upper spine. And 
and slowly releasing bring the knee back in come back to hands and knees and take it back into child's pose And slowly coming back up to hands and knees. We'll take our rolling panda on the other side. I'm going to turn around just so that I'm not turning my back to you. Slide your right arm under your left. Walk your left arm up as much as it feels good. Breathing here as you make any adjustments to the right side of the neck position, maybe walking your right shoulder down away from the ear and walking the right ear up a little bit away from the shoulder. And now optionally to bring it more into the back of the neck. If that's where you want to feel it, you could take this left foot out to the side like a kickstand. That hand that's above your head might walk farther back. Or you might like to wrap that hand around your back. I'm feeling it now in the right trapezius, back of the neck, base of the neck, upper spine. And releasing rolling panda pose. And we're just going to kind of slither onto the ground and onto the back and rest on the back for a moment. Maybe it feels good right now to hug the knees in before we move into our next pose, which is going to be spinal twist. Taking both knees over to the right in your twist. Perhaps crossing left knee over the right if that feels good or keeping them more stacked. And then left arm out to the left side. Right hand can come onto the legs. And breathe. Feel the energy that's moving through your body at this point in the practice. Breathing and softening, letting the body relax 
and melt into this position that it's taking. And take this left arm, reach it up, kind of trace the ground as you bring the arm up over your head and roll onto your right side and curl up into a ball. So bringing elbows and knees in, curling into the ball and, and slowly rolling up to the center. And finding your way into the second side of your twist. You might scoot your hips over toward the right side of your mat, bend your knees and bring them over. Right arm out to the side, perhaps crossing the knees. And feel free to play around with your legs being less bent, something like this, or even just one leg bent and the other leg straight, or bent knees can be bent more into the chest Everyone's different here with what they like, with what works best for their spine. So please feel free to explore and experiment because there really is not a right way to do it. In yin yoga, we really honor and try to notice and stay aware of all of our anatomical differences. And that's that's why everyone's yoga poses look so different. We are all so different physically, mentally, and the kind of yoga we do and the variations of poses we do can be different and should be different. So as you honor this unique body of yours, you can breathe deeply into it. Notice how the breath feels in your spine. Notice how the breath feels as you twist. And slowly now take this right arm up next to the head, tracing it along the ground, fingers along the ground until you curl up into a ball on your side and just rest here. Breathing. And slowly pushing up to a sitting position to come into caterpillar pose. You can have your legs narrower or wider, maybe as wide as your mat. Anywhere in between as you come forward, feel free to sit up on a cushion if that feels good to your body. 
or to prop blocks or cushions under your forehead. And see if your hands wanna be on your legs or holding the feet if that's easy for you. Sometimes even if you can hold the feet, if there's some kind of tension that it creates in your shoulders, because your arms aren't resting, then it might be better to either just let the arms, hands rest on the legs or the floor. Or if you have yoga blocks or some kind of firm cushions, you could try resting forearms on those. And softening into this forward bend, breathing into it. Letting the head relax as you bow the head forward in this position. It can be like a message to your body to relax. It can be a message to your mind to be relaxed and calm and clear. And slowly releasing, coming up. And our final relaxation time can be lying down on your back or sitting in meditation. So Shavasana on the back or seated meditation. making yourself comfortable wherever you are, making sure you're warm and supported, and make any final adjustments to your body position. And noticing what you're feeling in your body now at the close of this practice, stretching into all of the major areas of the body, waking up the body, releasing morning stiffness. Notice the space that's been created inside and honoring this space inside, honoring with the breath, all of the cells of your body Breathing into the spaces.
And now taking a deeper breath into your belly and into your heart and into your back. Open your mouth to exhale. And two more times, inhale. Last time. That's our practice today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful day. I will see you next time.